The basic idea is uh, given a sequence a n. So, given a sequence a n of numbers, how to add all its elements. So, that is uh, saying that uh, same as saying what can be A one plus A two plus what this quantity can be. So to define this uh, properly, let us make a definition. So given a sequence A n of real numbers. Let us uh, define S n to be equal to A 1 plus up to A n n bigger than 1. So, that is the sum of uh, the first n terms of the sequence. Okay. So, this S n it is called the nth partial sum. of the sequence a n. So, this is called the nth partial sum and let us uh, uh, give it a name. So, the pair okay, which way, which way, okay. so here is a sequence and here is the partial sums S n. Is called, we will call it a called a series. So, a sequence together with its partial sums is called a series of uh, numbers and we say this series, this is a convergent series. If I do not it small s n, if s n limit n going to infinity s n exists. If you look at the partial sums and take the limit of that if that limit exists, then we say that the series is convergent okay. uh, and if uh, this limit is equal to s, so s n, we write sigma a n, n equal to 1 to infinity equal to s. Now, let us uh, observe something, uh, so that we do not have to write this cumbersome notation of uh, series being this way, that given a sequence a n, S n are defined, partial sums are defined, right. So, we know S n's. And supposing we say that S, we give you a sequence S n of numbers, which is the partial sums of some sequence, then the sequence also is known, right. So, how is that? So, given A n, S n which was defined as A 1 plus a n is known. 
and conversely given S n what is a n that is S n plus 1 minus S n for every n right. So, giving the sequence or its partial sums that data both are equivalent to each other right you give one data you get the other data. So, uh, for that reason we do not uh, write all the time a series to be like this we just given a sequence a n we uh, so notation for a series is sigma a n right given a sequence a n we write the corresponding series as this this does not mean you should not take it as if uh, it says that the sum exists it is just a notation okay for that series if convergent so if it is convergent if the partial sums essence which we defined as sigma i equal to 1 to n a i converges to s then we write sigma a n equal to 1 to infinity is equal to s and say a n is convergent. If not, if it is not convergent, we say it is is divergent. Then we say it is divergent. Right. Let us look at some examples. Uh, they are relatively simple examples. So, let us uh, look at some examples. So, let us look at the series sigma a n, where the nth term is minus 1 to the power n plus 1 for n bigger than or equal to 1. So, this is a sequence a n what are the terms of sequence 1 plus n equal to 1 or so minus 1 right minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 and so on. We know that as a sequence this sequence is not convergent it fluctuates right. Let us try to form the partial sum S n. So, what will be the partial sum it depends on whether the n is even or odd. So, partial sum will be equal to 0 if n is even right the terms will cancel out otherwise it will be minus 1 or plus 1. So, uh, partial sums do not converge right. So, we can say that this series minus 1 to the power n plus 1 is not a convergent series by the definition itself ok. So, this is not convergent series. The simplest example of a convergent series is the one which we start looking at in our schools normally called the geometric series. So, what is a geometric series? So, it is a series where the nth term a n is r to the power n where r is a fixed real number. So, take a real number first term is r second is r square and so on right and this number r is called the common ratio because it is the ratio of a n plus 1 and a n. So, when is it uh, convergent? We all know that it is convergent when mod of r is strictly less than 1 right and why uh, how is that what is the proof of that one can find what is s n one can right 1 plus r plus this s n is equal to 1 minus r to the power n plus 1 over 1 minus r that is easy to find if you write s n something multiplied by a right it shifts the powers then subtract and you can easily compute what is s n. 
So, this formula that S n is equal to 1 minus r to the power n plus 1 over 1 minus r. We do it in our schools, but uh, it is not difficult to find. And if uh, r, so the question is whether r to the power n plus 1 converges to something or not as n goes to infinity. And we know we have done it in sequences that x to the power n converges to 0 if and only if mod x is strictly less than 1. So, using that fact, uh, this is convergent if and only if mod x is less than 1 and in that case the sum is equal to r to the power n minus 1 will go to 0. So, it is 1 over 1 minus r. So, the simplest example of a series which is convergent and this will be uh, sort of used again and again a geometric series whose common ratio is less than 1 is convergent. Okay? You will see how this is one of the building blocks for analyzing uh, series. Okay. Let us look at uh, one more example. Let us look at S n equal to 1 over n. Okay. The first one was minus 1 plus 1 and now it is 1 over n. So, what is S n? S n is 1 plus 1 by 2 plus up to 1 by n. Right? And uh, the terms are non-negative. Right? So, it seems S n is going to increase, right? you are going adding more and more non-negative numbers. Right? So, S 1 is 1 and uh, S 2 is equal to 1 plus half and so on. So, something is increasing, but the question is how much does it increase? Because if the partial sums S n are increasing, we know it is increasing, but if it is bounded, then they will converge. Right by the property of real numbers. So, is it bounded or not bounded? Right? If it is not bounded above, then it will not converge. So, to analyze that, one has to make some estimates. So, let us look at um, for n equal to 2 to the power k, let us compute this quantity. Right? So, uh, n to the 2 to the power k, so this is the 1 plus 1 by 2 and so on over 1 over 2 to the power k. And now, you pair up, see 1 over 4 is 1 over 2 square, right? 1 over 3 is 1 over 2 square minus 1. So, make this pairing and 2 to the power k is even, so you can pair up, right? Once you pair up, now this quantity 1 over 2 square minus 1, right? it is bigger than, if I increase the denominator here, it is bigger than 1 over 2 square. right? So, I get bigger than, I do it everywhere and this is 2 by 2 square and uh, uh, k by 2 to the power k. So, this is bigger than 1 plus k by 2. So, this kind of estimates one has to do right, to analyze a series. So, what we are saying is for n equal to 2 to the power k, the sum s 2 to the power k is 1 plus k by 2. Right? So, what happens to this uh, uh, partial sums for n equal to 2 to the power k as k goes to infinity? It is bigger than k by 2. So, it goes to infinity. right? So, at least for the partial sums, we have got a subsequence right? when n is equal to 2 to the power k. The partial sums has a subsequence which goes to infinity is non negative right so it is not bounded above so there is a subsequence which is not bounded above of partial sums so the sequence itself cannot be bounded above right so uh, the sequence of partial sums is not convergent because it is non negative right it is not bounded above but given any n right you can always find uh, uh, 2 to the power k say that s to the power uh, such that 2 to the power k is bigger than n. Is it okay? Given any natural number n, you can always find a k say that 2 to the power k is bigger than n, right? That increases faster than n, right? You can easily prove that. So, s to the power 2 s uh, the partial sum up to 2 to the power k will be bigger than the partial sum up to n. So, that also will go to infinity. right? So, that shows it is not bounded, so it is not convergent. So, what does it imply? 
it implies that the series 1 over n is not convergent. Right? So, this is how by definition itself alone we are trying to analyze. Okay? Because it is non-negative, we can make estimates. Let us uh, do one more estimation like this. This is an interesting. Uh, we had 1 over n. Now, let us look at. Uh, so, the series 1 over n is called harmonic series because of a different reason. Okay. Let us consider the harmonic series, but that now the terms are coming plus and minus. So, minus 1 to the power n plus 1 divided by n. So, it starts with n equal to 1, it is 1 minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 and so on alternating. Right? And let us try to find out uh, whether the partial sums for this uh, converge or not right? somewhere. So, let us make some estimates. Once again, um, as before, let us try to look at n equal to two, uh, 2 k. So, n equal to 2 k, look at the partial sums up to the terms 2 k. I think there is something wrong here. This is not this is not 2 to the power 2 k, it is just 2 k. Okay? So, there is a typo here. Now, how many terms are there? Even number of terms, right? 2 k. So, I am taking the sums of first 2 k terms. So, I can pair them. Okay? So, the first one, one. So, what I am doing is I am pairing up so that it is sum of non negative terms 1 minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 4 and so on. So, I have grouped them in 2 2 a pairing right? and 1 by 3 minus 1 by 4 that is non negative. right? So, each bracket is a non negative number. Okay? So, as to the so, what does it tell you about to this partial sums? that for n equal to 2 k, the partial sums are increasing, right? because each bracket is non-negative. When k plus 1, one more bracket will come, some non-negative thing will be added up. So, S 2 k is a sequence of non-negative real numbers. Okay? Let us see what happens when it is odd. Okay? So, let us com compute the same thing. Okay, for 2k plus 1. So, s 2k plus 1, one more term will be added there, right. So, what is the relation between them? s 2k plus 1 over 2k plus 1, that is equal to s 2k plus 1, right. One more term is added there, right. Okay. And it is plus here, because 2k plus 1 is odd. So, minus 1 to the power n plus 1 it was. right? So, this is a relation between 2 k and 2 k plus 1. So, if I look at this sequence of 2 k and 2 k plus 1, what is the difference between these two? This one is increasing as 2 k. As 2 k plus 1, when I pair them up, what can I say about the sequence as 2 k plus 1? 1 minus something minus again something I am subtracting and each bracket is non negative. So, I am more and more things are being sub subtracted. So, S 2 k plus 1 is decreasing as k increases, but S 2 k is increasing and this is the relation between them S 2 k is less than 2 k plus 1 and all are bounded in between 0 and 1. So, what does it imply? S 2 k is increasing and bounded. So, that will converge. S 2 k minus 1 that also is decreasing is a monotone sequence bounded below. So, that also will converge. So, both of them converge and what is the difference between the two? Between this S 2 k and S 2 k plus 1 the difference is 1 over k plus 1. So, the difference can be made as small as you want. So, the sequence of partial sums 
the even partial sums and the odd partial sums both converge to the same value right we have got a sequence right where the odd and the even both converge the subsequence of odd terms and the subsequence of even terms both converge to the same value so here is an exercise show that the sequence itself is convergent so take it as a exercise in sequences you have got a sequence of so an of numbers say so that if i take the subsequence of even right so a2 a4 a6 that subsequence and look at the subsequence a1 a3 and so on both converge to the same value then claim that the sequence itself should converge to that value okay the sequence itself is convergent is a very small exercise is a good exercise to go back and revise your notion of sequences just definition so that will mean what what will that mean odd and even both converge so the sequences themselves converge right so that means sn is convergent sn itself is convergent that was the exercise we are saying and as a result this series is convergent so the interesting thing is the series 1 over n is not convergent right but minus 1 to the power n plus 1 divided by n that is a convergent series right alternate plus and minus it terms if you make it that is called the alternating harmonic series so that is called so this series this series is called al alternating harmonic series that is convergent so i'm just giving you some examples to illustrate that how definition can be used to prove something is convergent or not and it becomes slightly cumbersome every time estimating the partial sums and trying to see whether it is convergent or not so so these are the examples which illustrate that so naturally um, let us look at one more probably 1 over n square okay so the series is nth term is 1 over n square there is a series of non negative terms so 1 over n square is non negative so partial sums will be a monotonically increasing sequence of numbers the question is whether it is bounded above or not if it is bounded above the partial sums then the series will converge if not then it will diverge again let us try to estimate okay the claim is that if i look at uh, nk which is 2 to the power k minus 1 okay then snk is less than or equal to sum of that geometric series 1 by 2 plus 1 1 by 2 1 by 2 cube and so on so we are trying to bring in somewhere again something known kind of a thing right and this proof for every k we want to prove something so what is the technique of proving something for every natural number the, the only thing we know is by induction right so induction so i apply induction sn1 is equal to 1 so it is true n k plus 1 right so what will be the, that is snk plus something right plus the remaining terms which are being added okay and that squares 2k square so you can make it less than 1 over 2 to the power k is less than 1 over 2 and so on okay so this becomes less than the geometric series so estimates basically okay so once you do that once you know this is true so what happens to the series snk it is less than this right and this is a convergent series we know that okay so what happens to the limit as n go and as k goes to infinity right the geometric series is it okay it is bounded by the geometric series so that we know the sum of nth terms okay and goes to infinity so sorry 
So, what we are saying is there is a subsequence n k, okay? there is a subsequence n k of partial sums as sense which are bounded between 0 and 2. Can I say that that implies S n itself is bounded? What is n k? What was n k? n k was 2 to the power k minus 1. Right? We are saying that if I take n to be n k to be this, then S n k is bounded. Can I claim that S n itself is bounded? Keep in mind they are non-negative. Right? Once again, given any n, given any n, you can find a k say that n is less than n k. Is that okay? Given any natural number n, you can find a power of 2 to the power k say that n is less than 2 to the power k minus 1. Is that okay? Yes or no? Yes. Natural numbers 2 to the power, right? They are going to increase faster than n anyway, much faster. Okay. So that means what? And they are non-negative terms. So given any n, there is a k says that n is less than n k. Can I say S n is less than S n S of n k? Yeah, because they are non-negative terms. S n is increasing, right? and that is bounded by 2. So, each S n is bounded by 2. Each partial sum is bounded by 2 because the uh, sequence of partial sums is monotonically increasing and for n equal to 2 to the power k minus 1, it is bounded by 2 and couple this with the fact that given any n, you can find a natural number k says that n is less than 2 to the n 2 to the power k minus 1. So, S n will be less than the partial sum up to 2 to the power k minus 1 which is less than 2. So, each S n is bounded by 2, it is monotonically increasing. So, they will be convergent right? because they are non-negative. So, 1 over n square is a convergent series. Okay? So, this is convergent, monotonically increasing and bounded. So, it is convergent. Okay. Here, what was helping us is because it is a series of non negative terms, right? partial sums are monotonically increasing, we have to only analyze whether they are bounded above or not. Okay.